so my husband and I were roommates before we. Oh yeah. <laughs> before we were boyfriend girlfriend, and yeah. then uh, husband and wife, and so he was my roommate when I was getting diagnosed. Wow. Okay, so that is rare. he um, he met right. He and I met right when I got back from Madagascar. So he has oh. been with me through the entire journey in in one way or another. And so he um, has a unique perspective yeah. on that. Um, I, I am sort of grateful that he didn't know me prior because I am different. Because mm-hmm. if you did know me prior, I'd be, you know, gallivanting around the globe and mm-hmm. um, have had a very different lifestyle than I have now. So um, that's been a blessing. Mm-hmm. It's also... Um, you know, helped him in, in understanding exactly what I'm going through because he's, he's seen the whole process. Um, a lot of it is, is just sort of the, the daily logistics of my physical limitations. Mm -hmm. Um, but we found our, you know, we, we, uh, after now it's been uh, how long, 10, 11 years, 11 years together. Um, we, you know, we've we've worked into sort of a flow of our division of labor of the types of activities that right. I do for keeping house and the types of things yeah. that he does. You know, he digs in the dirt and I dust, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of logically divide the labor based on what you're physically able to do. Yeah, yeah, no, he has a strong caregiver instinct yeah. um, to be yeah. sure and boundless energy. Oh, it's helpful. Uh, it is extremely helpful. So yes, he's doing probably a lot more than his fair share of the work, but he has more than his fair share of the energy. So <laughs> yeah, I did want to ask about fatigue because there's uh, not always a lot of awareness about fatigue, and you know some of the research I've read is that fatigue is the second hot, most important symptom to most patients with rheumatoid arthritis mm-hmm. after pain. Yet. I have an amazing um, rheumatologist who I'm like obsessed with, but we hardly ever talk about it because I actually didn't even know for a long time that it was related. I thought I was just tired just yeah. from maybe the medication. But have you, uh, do you feel that fatigue is, that you have fatigue, you know, related to your RA or? Yeah, absolutely. And, but what's so weird about fatigue is, is how intangible it is compared mm-hmm. to like, you know, uh, uh, pain. Yeah, yeah. pain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Cause, yeah, pain. So in your face, right? Um, I, I hadn't been very aware of how fatigued I was until I went into remission during my pregnancy. A hundred percent similar. Yeah. And yeah. then I was like bouncing off the walls, skipping through fields. La di da, being pregnant is the best. And all the other yeah. like moms in my mom groups are looking at me like. What is yeah, they're like pregnancy you? is so hard, and you're like, what? Like, I feel amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's the best I've felt in the last eleven years Me was too. when yeah. I was pregnant. So you don't realize what uh, a weight the um, fatigue is until it's gone, because it really is so sort of all consuming. It just resets your baseline it moves Mm -hmm. what normal is and for me anyway there is no um break from that i i'm it's on or it's It's, off it's not just like you go to sleep and then you feel better it's not like tiredness yeah Yeah. it's much more it's global it's like you're i almost feel for me like fatigue feels like the cells in my body are just having to work harder to just do the most basic stuff yeah What about if you were comfortable sharing like family relationships, like uh, with your own family, you know, talking about your diagnosis or, or friendships, has that ever been, has there been any um, highlights or low lights from that, you know? Yeah, kind of- I would say the friendships, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really grateful for the support of my best friend. I'm still best friends with my um, high school best friend oh, from, yay. from the Midwest. And so we still keep yeah. in close contact and, and she's been incredibly supportive the whole time. Um, as far as other adult friendships, that is something that is is hard for all adults, right? We're all mm-hmm. hyper scheduled. We have all these competing mm-hmm. responsibilities of work and family and home and um, it, it's hard to maintain friendships, period. But as someone who has to go to bed at like 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. We're on the same sketch. Yeah. We should hang out more. Yeah. 
<laughs> Want to hang out at 7.30 tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it's hard, especially with um, where the bulk of my uh, current friendships have come from, from work and grad, grad school. Yeah. I'm not going out for cocktails. Yeah. Uh, and so that, that is a bit hard. And I, I, I struggle still to communicate with, with my adult friends about how, how they can, how we can still have meaningful friendships Mm -hmm. If I can't do the activities they're otherwise inclined to do, like, right, it's hard to ask for, can we do this instead? I'm still working on that. That's definitely an uphill battle (laughs) for me, just personally. Yeah, yeah, you don't like want to ask for special treatment or have your friends not be able to do what they wanted to do. Yeah, so, so yeah. Yeah. But if any of them are watching this, I'm sure they'll be like, they're going to be like, what do you mean? We should be doing something with you immediately. Do you want me to come rub your feet? Like, they would do that. (laughs) They would, but it's about asking, being able to ask. To me, like, I had this, like, the very worst times in my physical condition, whether from rheumatoid arthritis or some of my other chronic illnesses, I haven't felt like reaching out because I, I, I want to wait till I'm feeling better to do that. So I did have this thought like in the summer of 2017, which was kind of my personal low point. I was like, you know, it's kind of if a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, right? It's like if I don't tell my friends that I'm really hurting, I'm really suffering right now. And the reason I haven't heard from me isn't just that I'm really busy or like I'm out having fun. It's that like I'm barely holding it together. They're not going to know that.